Hi and welcome to this video where I've managed to remove the inlet manifold and then I had the trickier task of removing the injectors. So this turned out to be a bit of a challenge. Injectors two and three, no problem at all, they came straight out. Injector number four was a little bit tricky, but I was actually able to get a spanner on there and rotate um, and gradually work that one loose. And then injector number one decided to be a complete nightmare. And I didn't actually think I was going to get injector one out. Um, but injector one is out. Um, but it also brought with it a sleeve. So I think that's supposed to still be in the engine. But this was so tarred on, it was absolutely bonded inside that sleeve. So the whole sleeve came out as well. Um, now I've also managed to retrieve all the copper washers off the four injectors. So the injectors are now out, so that's good. Um, there's a lot of sticky tar absolutely everywhere, as you can see. I mean, we've got absolutely pools of tar that I need to try and somehow remove. Um, but yes, yeah, so hopefully we're making some progress now and the next step should be to remove the cam cover and hopefully have a look at this timing chain between the inlet and exhaust cam and obviously we're presuming the tensioner has blown the part in there um, and hopefully that's the issue but obviously I've now obviously got to get all this lot if I do resolve that, I've got to get all this lot back together um, and hope it all works. So, but anyway, yeah, so hopefully you'll find this video of use to you and it might help you remove the injectors on your um, diesel engine. And many thanks for watching. So we start with a quick overview of the engine before we start work. So there we can see the inlet manifold and the four injectors with the red little caps on that I added last time. So that's basically how things stand at the moment. So let's start by removing the inlet manifold. So again I'll show a coloured photo of the inlet manifold so we can see exactly which part it is that we need to remove. And here's a little bit of a sneak preview of what it looks like when it's actually removed because there's eight ports there with rubber seals in that hold it in place. So the first thing to do is get this diesel priming pump just tucked out the way because it's also clipped on there on part of the inlet manifold bracket. So I'm just going to use some of these Wolfcraft clips there just get that nicely out the way. And then for this it's an 8mm socket and there's just two screws at the back of this manifold. So this is the one on the right hand side. I'm checking the length again making sure that they are the same length. And then we've got another one here. So we just pop this one out. You can see all that soot in there from the EGR valve. So you might need a little magnetic pickup there just to help pull that one out. So I'm just going to compare, confirm that they are the same length and pop them to the side where I'll probably lose them. Now to remove this it's basically a case of just pulling it up. Um, but being plastic you obviously don't want to be too rough. Now if you put a like a tyre lever like I am underneath here, there is a risk you might little break the sort of thin ribs there that are underneath, um, which I did. But yeah, I'm just trying to sort of wiggle it away there, just to try and get things to start moving. So 
So we're sort of free there on the left. It's coming away now. There we are. Might hurt yourself a few times. Right, so that's the inlet manifold removed. And the first thing I notice is it's quite sooty in there. There is quite a bit of soot. So just a sort of quick basic scrape out. Because ideally this would obviously be cleaned out and get all this soot out before putting it back on the engine when the job's finished. So this gets really gummed up. And presumably that's going to affect the flow of air going into the cylinders. But it does look sort of an awkward design there to try and clean that out because you can't really get anything in there to actually try and dislodge it and it's so sticky. It really is like a tar. So I think what we'll have to do is, see there's some of it there, let's perhaps take it to a bench now and see if I can work on this a little bit more. But we'll have a quick look down there just to see how much soot is actually inside where the EGR cooler pipe goes to. That was in the previous video, it was removing the EGR cooler and this is the pipe that connects to that. And as you can see there is quite a build up of carbon inside that which really I'd like to get rid of. So my thinking was if I put 13 of these sort of DIY chipboard fixing screws in, perhaps I could just shake them around um, and it would knock most of the soot out. It sort of worked, but I've got to be honest, it wasn't overly effective. I don't think there was enough weight in them to really sort of knock it around as much as it needed. The thing was, I thought, well, if as long as you count how many you've put in, make sure that same number comes back out. Um, so obviously if you left one of these in there and that then went into the valves, that could be quite catastrophic. So that, that idea is not without its risks. But we have got a bit of soot out. I think we'll probably go onto the carburetor cleaner now. Just see if we can try and wash it out. There's plenty of tar coming out of it. These diesel engines are quite dirty really. I didn't realise they were quite this mucky. So we just had a few photos here to show the inlet manifold and those various seals. And here's the tyre lever damage, which is why you need to be a bit careful. And there's another photo showing that seal. Right then, so let's crack on now to removing the diesel injectors. So just before I start, I will show that I do actually have a diesel injector puller, um, which I could have resorted to. But you do have to sort of take the injectors apart to use that which I didn't really want to do. So my first job was I'm going to number these injectors because they are actually coded to the ECU of the car. So they do need to go back in the same order they came out. And that's again one of the reasons why I didn't really want to start taking the injectors apart and using a slide hammer. Um, because if I damaged one I'd have to get a new one and recode it. Okay so it's a 7mm hex here for these eight sort of column nuts there. I'll get all these out. So this is the first time I've actually removed injectors from a diesel. It's actually I think the first time I've ever worked on a diesel engine. So this is all new to me. So I realised that history does say that putting these injectors out can be one very awkward job. I didn't realise it was going to be quite as awkward as this. 
So number one was the injector that gave me the the biggest issue because access to that number one injector is awkward because there's actually a sort of raised area where the timing chain is between the inlet and exhaust cam and that meant you couldn't get a spanner in there as I'm going to demonstrate now so this would be a 24 millimeter spanner and I presume you're supposed to just pop it on there and start rotating the injector no luck there so moving on to number two injector that one lovely just came straight out so there we are so looks a little bit rusty there not quite sure that whether that was me jet washing the engine and perhaps some water actually went down there and has sat there doing a little bit of corroding because I don't think there's any other issues with this engine or not with the head gasket as far as I'm aware just smelling it there to see if I could smell any diesel or anything okay then so going on to injector number three and again straight out that actually looks like quite a new injector to me so I'm wondering whether that's actually been recently fitted because that looks in very good condition all right then and now we start having the fun so this is the one I thought would be stuck because of the lava because this was obviously where the lava flow was so I'm using a spanner extension here just to get this thing moving and thankfully the spanner extension did work quite well you starting to get a little bit of movement when I say little I do mean little come on push it there we go right so it gives you an idea just how stuck that is somebody did say that it's best to remove the injectors when the engine's hot um, that would seem to be the most sensible thing to do to be honest because at least this tar would be soft and clearly it's not soft at the moment right, so we're getting some rotating movement I tried to rotate all the way around but actually that's a bad idea because what I found was it actually undid part of the injector at the bottom so there's like a lower section of the injector and if that's stuck in the tar and you force the rotation it was actually starting to unwind that so that could have been really disastrous so you don't really want to keep rotating them but you can see just how sticky this tar is it's an absolute nightmare I wonder if that's what crude oils like so I'm trying to get the carb cleaner down inside this injector um, down the tube but in the end this is the method that seemed to work it's probably not the right method which was I put a span on it like this and then levered it so I'm just going to try and clean this now see if I can get some of this tar out of the way so I can spray so when I spray the carb cleaner in there hopefully it's clean fresh carb cleaner that's getting down but really this was just um, making a bit of a mess So when they're stuck, they really are stuck in there. So I did actually work away at this off camera um, because obviously it was just there was pointless just videoing for hours while I was trying to get this thing out. So I did try using lever here, but again the the issue with this is it's possibly going to damage the soft aluminium of the cam cover. So. You don't really want to do that either. So it's definitely sort of dissolved all the tar. 
Okay, so I've just speeded this up. So the injector's now out, but this was after considerably working at it off camera, like I said earlier. So the method I used, which actually got this out, was this. I put a spanner in, I rotated it around to the back, and then using the threaded, the stud protruding, I used it as a pivot and hammered on the spanner. And yes, that's that one out. But that was nothing compared to what was going to happen now with number one. So we can't get a spanner on that at all. There's no way of, because we're going to damage the cover there, as you can see there's some damage to the aluminium already. You can't get a spanner in there because it's not long enough. I did try using the method I used it on number four. Doing this actually broke the edge of my lever away. So my lever wasn't even strong enough to attempt this one. But I was trying to go with the softly, softly approach because I didn't really want to start getting heavy handed with this um, for fear of damaging other things. So I'm starting to sort of warm things up as I'm getting frustrated. And it's not going to come out. I can't risk damaging that. So then I thought, well, if I use a 13mm socket, remove the high pressure coupling here, and perhaps put a thread in there, I could use it as a lever. The only problem was that I didn't actually have any threads that would fit, so that was out the window. Then I thought, what about a ball joint splitter? Because it actually sort of fits in there quite well. And I thought that's actually got some potential here and it actually got the injector moving so like I said I could have used the um, slide hammer kit that I've got but like I said I've not worked on diesels before so I didn't really want to start taking the injector apart now this method actually did work so I tried to free it up first and then tried to use my 24 mil spanner and do the same method I used on the other one which was to lever it but it definitely wasn't going to work on this cylinder. So then I sort of upped my game a bit, put a chisel on there to spread the load so I didn't damage the aluminium, and belted it. And it worked. Placed it in another position there, and gave it a good smack. And it was out but there was a slight catch with this as it came out in that it looked a slightly different to the other injectors so yes yeah, slightly different looking that one and there's a reason for that so now let's start cleaning the injectors okay so I'll go to the bench now and start to clean this up. Now what I found unusual was that this injector, although really stuck, didn't seem to have much tar on it. Which I thought was quite odd. I thought, why is the end got tar on, but the rest of the body is actually clean? So the penny's still not dropped yet. And then I realise they're different. And I think, uh-oh, I think we've extracted something extra from the engine. So what actually happened was the tube that the injector goes into actually was ripped out as well. Not ideal. So you can see the force that was required to get that eject injector out. Right then, let's see if I'm right in thinking 
we've got an extra tube here. So we've got some bubbling tar at the end there. Slight bit of movement. You can see why having a warm engine would actually make a lot of sense here. It would make removing the injectors a lot easier. All right then, so there we go. Now there's the tar. That bonded that in. So, so it was injector one and four that seemed to have the leakage past those copper washers. Okay, so if we take a quick photo of these injectors, because they're all different. So here's all the numbers that are actually written on the top of the injector and the codes for each one, which I think you actually have to put into the ECU when you actually put these injectors in the car. Right then, so now extracting the copper sealing washers because three are still in the injector bores. So we'll have a quick look at this. So that's what we're looking at now. Tar City. Absolute mess. I've never seen anything like it. But anyway, right. So this is the tool I'll be using, which I think is a pretty much a standard puller. They're under all sorts of different names, um, but presumably made by the same manufacturer. So I've gone for one which was £25. I didn't go for the cheapest, but some of these are priced at like £100. So I think clearly overpriced if they're made by the same company. So the idea is we pop this in sort of tap it in I think and tighten it in there to sort of pinch into the copper washer and then extract it so there it is so we've now got two washers out so we now go on to cylinder number two So they're stuck in with the tar as well, so this tool is sort of somewhat needed. There we are. Now these washers uh, will need replacing. You definitely can't reuse these. And lastly, cylinder number one. Plenty of tar come up on that one. Right, so we'll have a look at some photos now of these injectors. So that's all four of them out. So hopefully no damage has been done to those with pounding away at them. Presumably they're okay because you can use a puller on them then you would remove the solenoid first on the top of the injector before you started banging away on it. But anyway, so here's the measurements of the tip of the injector. It's about 7 millimeters, And the washers are about 15 millimeters in diameter. Okay then, so lastly, the eight rubber O-ring seals. So I've already removed four of them, so I thought I'd best just finish the video and correctly show them being removed otherwise that part wouldn't have actually been shown so this is what they look like so it's quite a soft rubber and I think that's like a retention disc to hold them on the actual inlet manifolds I presume these are normally on the inlet manifold and then they're pushed in. And logically these would be replaced as well 
when rebuilding the engine. Okay then, so some reference photographs which you can pause to view for longer. So here we start with the first photo which was the inlet manifold and everything. And there's the various holes. Our sooty inlet manifold. An example of a puller there, injector puller. All the mess and tar on, on injectors one and four. So are the little plastic parts there that the injectors go inside. I've pulled one of those up as well so that there's a photo of that. Look at that soot build up in there. Yeah, so there's the little plastic sort of discs and there's they pull out. Again, I think they need to be replaced. And then this was the coding on my four injectors. Like I say, those numbers have to be programmed into the ECU, I believe, with your um, diagnostic laptop. And then finally, there's those injectors with the four copper washers and the measurements. So I think that concludes this video. So you've been watching removing the inlet manifold and diesel fuel injectors on a 2009 Mini R56. And thank you for watching. And I hope this video helps you service and maintain your car within your budget. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in April 2022. And I can be found on Instagram and Facebook as Coats and Gators.